with winter almost here, anything we can grow outside is almost a bonus. We concentrate so hard on extending our growing season and planting as many cold tolerant crops as possible. And this is a good thing. But what do you do with a garden bed that's going to lie dormant all winter long? Well, let's get into it and I'll show you what I do. Hey guys, if this is the first time visiting the Ripe Tomato Farms channel, first up, I want to thank you for stopping by. Here, we talk about all the things that you can do to maximize the vegetable production in your backyard gardens. So if producing fresh organic vegetables for you and your family is something you're passionate about, consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Here we have an 8x4 raised garden bed that this summer grew Roma tomatoes as a main crop with carrots, basil, and French dandelions in the understory. So when letting your bed go dormant or fallow for the winter, the first thing you want to get a handle on is the old plants as well as the weeds. So you want to see one of the reasons why I do no-till farming and why I believe the top layer of your soil is so active? I haven't disturbed this soil at all. And there's a red wiggler, you know, crawling in and amongst the weeds here. These top layers are so active. Look, there's another one. Right there. Don't dig up your soil, guys. It's just not worth it. So now that we've removed any of the old crop, as well as got a handle on those weeds that were taking over the bed, we're ready for the next step. Now, obviously, we haven't killed and removed those weeds completely, but in no-till farming, it's not always about eradicating the weeds at all costs. 
Moreover, it's about preserving the soil integrity, especially the top layer, and then suppressing those weeds to allow your crops to flourish. Step two is to take action to further suppress those weeds from getting established and also to prevent new weed seeds from germinating. We do this by simply adding a barrier right on top of the soil. The barrier of choice for organic farmers and gardeners is either newsprint or cardboard. Water your newspaper layers to prevent them from blowing away in the wind. So we've cleared all the old plants out of the bed and we've cut down all those weeds. Then we added a protective layer to suppress any further weeds from coming up. And now we're ready for step three. And step three is adding your mulch. Organic plant-based mulches are really easy to make with materials that are readily available in and around your garden. Things like grass clippings, shredded leaves, and even the old foliage from spent plants as well as weeds work just fine. When you mulch in the summer, you have two objectives, moisture retention and the moderation of extreme temperatures. Mulching in the fall and winter is sort of the opposite. As we approach the wettest months of the year, we need to cover up exposed soils to prevent the massive leaching of nutrients. And as the temperatures start to dip, we use a thick winter mulch layer to keep our dormant plants nice and snug. So there we go guys, that didn't take long at all. An eight by four bed, 32 square feet, probably took me less than 10 minutes. And now I know that I can feel safe, that this bed will be secure all fall and all winter long. And not only that, it'll be ready to plant next spring, as soon as the warm weather hits. Hey guys, leave any questions or comments down below. Let me know what you guys are doing with your raised beds over the winter. Are you gonna try and continue to grow right through the winter? or you're gonna set your beds up for dormancy like we did here. Either way, I'd love to hear about it. Click subscribe if you haven't already. For those of you that have, I really do appreciate the support. And I'll see you next time.